the, the, the first film is almost coming up on its 10 year anniversary next year. I know it was uh, 2014 yeah. was when it came out. So that's that's amazing to me that we've got a decade to, to celebrate. Crazy. 10 years. I know it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw Kiana last week. We were shooting stuff for the documentary about the films in the series. We couldn't help but smile. I mean, there's a million things we try to do better and knowing what we know now and all that stuff. But we're pretty proud of our crew. We're proud of the character work. We're proud of like Kim here for sure. And I know you've addressed this before too, but certainly you're throwing the gauntlet down that scene too of killing the dog. That's that's a it's a hard thing to do right off the top for an audience but, to accept. But you knew you had to do it. It sounds like it, we it was a lot of discussions. Don't get me wrong. It was discussed like, are we really doing this? But like, okay, you have to remember in 2014, no way knew John Wick. Keanu was doing much smaller films. We honestly, honest to God, believe no one was going to see the movie. We thought we were right straight to video. Video, you know, right to video. No one would ever see the movie. So we're like, well, let's be bold. And in our thing, Keanu is that kind of creative partner that goes, no, I want to cry. I want to, I, I need this. This is the key. Like, what are you guys thinking? Smack, smack, smack. Put your director cups on. Let's tough up and get this done. You know, and he was right. So, so leading into chapter two now, now you are taking over solo behind the camera and things. Does that movie more represent you in your in, in your sensibility? Think, or is it, yeah, yeah, I think it represents a, a very different relationship. Now it's Keanu and I. But number two to your question is definitely more where I think modern day fantasies like Lord of the Rings. How do I build worlds? How like I'm interested in that. And you can see who I am as a director, a storyteller from all the three movies like that's how kooky and big and I love taking ninjas and putting them with dogs and you know right. but I don't think that would have been a great way to start the franchise I think it's a great way to end it's a little different way to start John Leguizamo has said over the years that, that he had a big fight scene in number two that wound up getting cut is that the case was there a fight scene with his, with his it's character a big fight scene but he had a confrontation with um, um, Ricardo Scarbaccio, um the, the, the villain from number two um, there was a cut scene that just we can't we were number two, and we would already go in like 15 minutes longer than number one. We came in heavy, man. I came, I came in like 220 on number two. So unfortunately, yes, I had to trim things down. In the third movie, by this point, you have a fan base. You know you do. And I, one of the things I like about the third movie is that you're using Mark Damascus as the villain to sort of in, interrogate fandom a little bit. They're like he's, he's a John Wick fanboy, and so that becomes part of it. it were, yes. Is that your way of sort of looking at the fans and what people want, why John Wick works for people? Yeah, we're making fun of ourselves pretty hard there. <laughs> And Mark just started doing this riff for like, look, in my mind, Zero's a fanboy. He loves it. He's so, he loves this guy. And like, as soon as he said it, we just started laughing going, are we going to be this crazy? After that night, we sat and we, we worked on the script for a weekend. And we're like, well, let's just ride this. We'll go, fuck it. We'll go meta. <laughs> and then we'll make Mark literally the mirror version we'll make it our fan base and just say one we think we're a little ridiculous <laughs> two thank you so much i can't believe we're here kind of thing and mark was saying things we all felt like and we were just kind of making fun of ourselves and uh, hopefully people got that in terms of the transition between three and four, it definitely feels like that's the first time where really John Wick gets a break because one, two, and three all happen very sequentially. There, There's almost no downtime in between. There's a little bit of a downtime between three and four. Do you have a sense of the overall timeline and what, and what like, is this take place over a month? What, what's your mental imagery? of the, how the first three films for me take place in like a week or two. Mm -hmm. Like it's all boom, 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 boom. Keanu has a slightly more relaxed timeline. Mine's like just, you know, I could do it. I think all three of them happen like five days, just fucking pound it out, right? And then like a good six months between three and four. One, one theory I have, and you can tell me I'm right or wrong here, is that is that is that these three movies, two, three, and four, are sort of the three chapters of Dante's Divine Comedy, where you go from hell to purgatory. And then the last one, for me anyway, is heaven, because of certainly the way it ends. I, I, again, I don't know if that's too meta. No, we're, we're pretty on, like, it, the Divine Comedy is literally right next to me right here. And it's got <laughs> so many bookmarks. And <laughs> but I, I do love that that, that that Keanu is one of the few action stars who doesn't mind dying in movies. I just interviewed uh, the director of the new Sly Stallone documentary, and you know that movie gets into why Stallone refuses to die. He won't do it ever since First Blood, and I, I think it's it's something that Keanu is willing to to do that to, to you know even if it's not uh, explicit in four. But yeah, I, I've, no, I've known Keanu over twenty what is it twenty five years now. I I've never seen him put Keanu into the mix. You know, when it comes time to that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's ever said, I don't want to die. You know, he's the one that came to me after three going, I think John Wick should die. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he just wants to know what's a good story and a good stuff. I'm sure everybody has their reasons, but uh, that's, I think, the way he looks at it.